Hello. My name is Parker and let me tell you about the most unsettling night of my life. It happened a few years ago, but the memory is still as fresh as if it were yesterday. It was one of those dark, stormy nights, the kind where the rain pounds against the windows and the wind howls like a chorus of ghosts. I was home alone, and I had no idea that the night would turn into a nightmare I would never forget. I had been looking forward to a quiet evening. My parents were out of town, and my younger sister was staying at a friend's house. I had the whole place to myself, and I planned to binge watch some movies, maybe read a book, and just relax. Little did I know, relaxation was the last thing I would get that night. It started with a flickering light in the hallway. I was in the living room, curled up on the couch with a blanket, watching a horror movie, ironic, I know. The light flickered once, then twice, and finally went out. I chalked it up to the storm and went to grab a flashlight from the kitchen drawer. As I was rummaging through the drawer, I heard a faint sound. At first, I thought it was just the wind, but then it grew louder, more distinct. It was a rhythmic tapping, like fingers drumming on a table. I froze, listening intently. The tapping was coming from upstairs. I tried to convince myself it was just a branch hitting the window, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. I mustered up the courage to investigate, flashlight in hand. The stairs creaked under my weight as I made my way up, each step feeling heavier than the last. When I reached the top of the stairs, the tapping stopped. I stood there in the dark hallway, my heart pounding in my chest. The only light came from the occasional flash of lightning illuminating the windows. I moved slowly, cautiously, towards my bedroom, where the tapping seemed to have originated. I pushed the door open, and the room was empty, just as I had left it. Feeling a bit foolish, I turned to leave when I heard a whisper. It was so soft, I almost thought I imagined it. But then it came again, clearer this time. Come closer, it said. My blood ran cold. I swung the flashlight around, scanning the room, but there was no one there. The whispering continued, repeating the same phrase over and over. Come closer. I backed out of the room, my mind racing. Maybe it was a prank. Maybe my friends were trying to scare me. I called out, who's there, but received no response. The house was silent except for the rain hammering the roof. As I waited, I decided to turn on all the lights, hoping to chase away the shadows. I made my way through the house, flipping switches, but when I reached the hallway upstairs, none of the lights would turn on. I tried every switch, but they were all dead. The hallway was plunged into darkness, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. Suddenly, there was a loud crash from the attic above me. I jumped, my heart racing. The attic had always creeped me out, with its old, creaky floorboards and dusty corners. I had never liked going up there, even during the day. But now, in the middle of the night, with a storm raging outside, it felt like the last place I wanted to be. I knew I couldn't just ignore it, though. I had to check it out, if only to convince myself that everything was fine. I grabbed the flashlight again and pulled down the attic ladder. It creaked loudly as I climbed up, each step feeling like a step closer to some unknown horror. When I reached the top, I shone the flashlight around the attic. The beam of light cut through the darkness, revealing boxes of old clothes, forgotten toys, and other random items stored away over the years. Nothing seemed out of place at first, but then I noticed the far corner of the attic. There was a small, old trunk that I had never seen before. It was open, and the contents were strewn across the floor. As I approached the trunk, I felt a chill in the air. The temperature seemed to drop the closer I got. The flashlight flickered, and for a brief moment, I thought I saw a shadow move across the wall. I stopped, listening intently, but there was only silence. I knelt down to examine the contents of the trunk. It was filled with old photographs, letters, and other personal items that must have belonged to the previous owners of the house. Among the items was a worn, leather-bound journal. I picked it up and opened it, skimming through the pages. 
It was filled with handwritten entries detailing the life of a woman named Margaret who had lived in the house decades ago. One entry, in particular, caught my eye. It was dated October 31, 1953, and described a series of strange occurrences that Margaret had experienced. She wrote about hearing whispers in the night, seeing shadowy figures, and feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. The entry ended abruptly, with the words, I fear for my life. As I read those words, a cold gust of wind blew through the attic, extinguishing the flashlight. I was plunged into darkness, and the whispering began again. Come closer, it said, louder and more insistent this time. I fumbled with the flashlight, trying to turn it back on, but it was dead. Panic set in as the whispering grew louder, now coming from all around me. I stumbled back towards the attic ladder, desperate to get out of there. As I descended, I felt something brush against my arm. I nearly lost my grip, but managed to make it down to the hallway. The whispering followed me, echoing through the house. I ran down the stairs and back to the living room, where I found Emily waiting for me. She took one look at my terrified face and asked, what's wrong? I quickly explained everything, from the tapping to the shadowy figure and the attic. Emily, always the rational one, suggested we leave the house and call the police. But as we made our way to the front door, we found it locked. I had locked it earlier, but now it wouldn't budge. None of the windows or doors would open, as if we were trapped inside. The whispering grew louder, more frantic. Come closer, it repeated, now sounding almost desperate. Emily and I huddled together, trying to figure out what to do. Suddenly, the lights flickered back on, and the whispering stopped. The house was silent once more, but the sense of dread lingered. We decided to stay together in the living room, waiting for the storm to pass and for morning to come. Neither of us slept that night, too scared to close our eyes. When the first light of dawn finally broke through the rain, the oppressive feeling began to lift. We managed to get the door open and left the house, vowing never to spend another night there alone. I moved out of that house soon after, unable to shake the memories of that night. To this day, I don't know what happened or what I encountered. But every time it rains, I can't help but feel a chill run down my spine, and I remember the whispering, the shadows, and the overwhelming sense of dread that haunted me on that rainy night alone. Hello. My name is Josh and let me tell you about a night that changed my life forever. It was a rainy evening, much like the ones you see in horror movies, but this was no fiction. This was my reality, and it all took place in my family's old house on Maplewood Lane. The house had been in our family for generations, and while it had its charm, it also had a history that was anything but ordinary. It all started on a Friday night. My parents had gone out of town for the weekend, and my younger brother was away on a school trip. I was left alone in the house, something that had never bothered me before. I was actually looking forward to having some peace and quiet. I had planned to spend the night catching up on my favorite shows and maybe diving into a good book. Little did I know, the night would turn into a living nightmare. The rain had started early in the evening, a steady downpour that drummed against the roof and windows. I had settled on the couch in the living room, wrapped in a blanket with a hot cup of tea. The house was eerily quiet except for the rain and the occasional rumble of thunder in the distance. I had just started a movie when I heard the first strange noise. It was a faint sound, almost imperceptible over the rain, but it caught my attention. It was coming from upstairs, like a soft creaking, as if someone was slowly walking across the floor. I paused the movie and listened intently, but the noise stopped. Telling myself it was just the house settling, I tried to brush it off and resumed watching the movie. About half an hour later, I heard it again but this time it was louder, more distinct. It was unmistakably the sound of footsteps, slow and deliberate, moving across the floor above me. My heart began to race. I knew I was alone in the house, or at least I thought I was. Grabbing a flashlight from the side table, I decided to investigate. I made my way upstairs, my footsteps echoing on the wooden steps. The hallway was dark, lit only by the occasional flash of lightning through the windows. 
I checked each room, one by one, but found nothing out of the ordinary. The footsteps had stopped again, and the house was silent. I stood there in the hallway, trying to convince myself it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. As I turned to go back downstairs, I heard a door creak open behind me. I spun around, shining the flashlight down the hallway. The door to the attic, which was always kept shut, was now ajar. A chill ran down my spine. Gathering my courage, I walked towards the attic door. I had never liked the attic, it was filled with old, dusty furniture, cobwebs, and memories of a time long past. I P.U. I pushed the door open and shone the flashlight up the narrow staircase. The beam of light cut through the darkness, revealing the cluttered, shadowy space. As I stepped inside, the air grew colder, and I could see my breath in front of me. The sense of unease grew stronger with each step I took. I scanned the attic, but there was no sign of anyone. Just as I was about to turn and leave, I heard a whisper. It was soft, almost a breath, but clear enough to send shivers down my spine. Help me, it said. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I turned the flashlight towards the source of the voice, but saw nothing. The whisper came again, more urgent this time. Help me. I felt a sudden urge to leave, to run as fast as I could, but something held me there. I took a deep breath and forced myself to speak. Who's there? I asked, my voice trembling. There was no response, just an oppressive silence that seemed to press in on me from all sides. I took a few more steps, shining the flashlight into the darkest corners of the attic. Then, I saw it. In the far corner of the attic, behind an old trunk, was a figure. It was a woman, her face pale and gaunt, her eyes wide with fear. She was dressed in what looked like an old-fashioned nightgown, and her hair was a tangled mess. She looked at me with such intensity that I felt rooted to the spot. Please, she whispered, help me. I was paralyzed with fear, but the look in her eyes compelled me to move closer. As I approached, she began to fade, becoming more translucent until she vanished completely. I stood there in shock, trying to process what I had just seen. The attic was empty again, but the coldness and the sense of dread remained. I hurried down the stairs, my mind racing. What had I just witnessed? I had always heard stories about the house being haunted, but I had never experienced anything myself. I tried to rationalize it, telling myself it was just a trick of the light or my imagination. But deep down, I knew it was real. Back in the living room, I tried to calm myself down. I turned on all the lights and checked every lock in the house. I even called a friend, but she didn't answer. I was truly alone. The rain continued to pour, and the wind howled outside, adding to the eerie atmosphere. I decided to do some research on the house, hoping to find some explanation for what I had seen. I pulled out my laptop and started searching for any history or records related to the house. What I found was both fascinating and horrifying. The house had been built in the late 1800s and had passed through several families. There were numerous reports of strange occurrences, unexplained noises, and sightings of a woman in a nightgown. According to the records, the woman I had seen was believed to be Margaret, a former resident who had disappeared under mysterious circumstances in the early 1900s. She had been last seen in the house, and many believed her spirit was trapped there, unable to move on. The more I read, the more the pieces began to fit together. The footsteps, the whispers, the coldness, all signs of a restless spirit. As the night wore on, the activity in the house seemed to intensify. I heard footsteps again, this time more frantic, almost as if someone was running through the halls. The whispering returned, more insistent and desperate. Help me, it repeated, over and over. I felt a sense of helplessness, not knowing how to help or what to do. At one point, the power went out, plunging the house into darkness. I lit some candles and huddled in the living room, trying to stay calm. The whispers seemed to come from all directions, surrounding me. I could feel a presence, something unseen but undeniably there. I closed my eyes, 
trying to focus, trying to think of a way to help the spirit of Margaret. Then, I remembered the journal I had found in the attic during my last visit. It had belonged to Margaret, and perhaps it held the key to understanding what she needed. I braved the darkness and made my way back to the attic. The air was even colder now, and the whispers grew louder as I approached the old trunk. I rummaged through the trunk until I found the journal. I took it back downstairs and began to read by candlelight. The journal entries painted a picture of a woman who had lived a life of fear and sorrow. Margaret wrote about her husband, who had been abusive and controlling, and how she felt trapped in the house. The last entry was particularly chilling. She wrote about how she feared for her life and felt as if she were being watched. As I read the final words, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder. I turned around, but there was no one there. The whispers stopped, and the house fell silent. I knew then what I had to do. I had to acknowledge Margaret's pain and suffering, to let her know that she was heard and understood. I spoke aloud, telling Margaret that I had read her words and that I was sorry for what she had endured. I promised to remember her and to keep her story alive. As I spoke, the coldness began to lift, and the oppressive feeling in the house started to dissipate. The rain outside slowed to a gentle patter, and the wind calmed. Hello. My name is James Parker and let me take you back to a night that still sends shivers down my spine. It was a dark, rainy evening, the kind where the sky seems to weep relentlessly, and the air feels thick with anticipation. I was house-sitting for my aunt and uncle at their old, sprawling estate known as Brookside Manor. The manor had always had an air of mystery about it, with its creaky floors and dimly lit hallways, but I had never been one to believe in ghosts. That night, however, changed everything. My aunt and uncle had left for a weekend getaway, leaving me in charge of their two dogs and the sprawling property. The house was isolated, surrounded by thick woods, and the nearest neighbor was a good mile away. I had always enjoyed the solitude and the chance to get away from the hustle and bustle of city life. Little did I know, I would come to regret that solitude. The rain had started in the early afternoon and showed no signs of letting up. By evening, the wind had picked up, howling through the trees and rattling the windows. I had settled into the cozy living room, a fire crackling in the fireplace, the dogs curled up at my feet. I was reading a book, trying to ignore the growing unease that seemed to permeate the air. It began with a soft knock at the door. I looked up, startled. Who could it be at this hour, in this weather? I put the book down and approached the front door, the dogs following close behind. I peered through the peephole but saw no one. I hesitated for a moment before opening the door, only to be met with the sight of an empty porch and the rain-soaked landscape beyond. I closed the door, feeling a bit foolish, and returned to my book. But the peace didn't last long. The knock came again, louder this time. I jumped up, heart pounding, and rushed to the door. Again, there was no one there. I stepped out onto the porch, calling out into the night, but the only response was the sound of the rain and the wind. Unease began to creep into my mind. I double-checked the locks and decided to ignore any further knocks, convincing myself it was just the wind playing tricks. I returned to the living room and tried to focus on my book, but my concentration was broken. The dog seemed agitated too, ears perked up, staring towards the dark hallway leading to the rest of the house. Then, I heard it. A faint, mournful cry coming from somewhere within the house. It was so soft, I almost thought I had imagined it. But the dogs heard it too, their heads turning towards the source of the sound. I stood up, heart racing, and grabbed a flashlight. The cry came again, louder and more desperate. I made my way down the dark hallway, the floorboards creaking under my feet. The house felt colder, the air thick with an unexplainable dread. The cry seemed to be coming from the basement, a place I had always avoided due to its damp, musty smell and the feeling of unease it gave me. But I had to know what was making that sound. I opened the basement door and shone the flashlight down the stairs. The beam of light revealed the cluttered space below, filled with old furniture, boxes, and forgotten memories. 
I took a deep breath and descended the stairs, each step feeling like a step into another world. The crying grew louder, echoing off the walls. As I reached the bottom, I noticed something I hadn't seen before. In the far corner of the basement was an old, ornate mirror. It was covered in a thick layer of dust, its surface reflecting the dim light in an eerie way. The crying seemed to be coming from behind it. I approached the mirror, my reflection staring back at me with wide, fearful eyes. I reached out to touch the mirror, and as soon as my fingers brushed against the cold glass, the crying stopped. The basement fell silent, but the silence was heavy, almost oppressive. I felt a sudden, overwhelming urge to leave, but my curiosity kept me rooted to the spot. I wiped away some of the dust from the mirror's surface, revealing more of my reflection. Then, I saw her. Standing just behind me in the reflection was a woman, her face pale and gaunt, her eyes filled with sorrow. She was dressed in an old-fashioned gown, her hair a tangled mess. I spun around, but the basement was empty. I turned back to the mirror, and she was still there, staring at me with those haunting eyes. Help me, she whispered, her voice barely audible. My heart pounded in my chest, and I felt a chill run down my spine. I didn't know what to do. I had never believed in ghosts, but there she was, as real as the rain outside. She reached out a hand, as if trying to touch me through the glass. I found my voice and asked, who are you? What do you want? But she didn't answer. Instead, she pointed towards the far wall of the basement. I followed her gaze and saw an old, wooden chest I hadn't noticed before. It was covered in dust and cobwebs, and looked like it hadn't been touched in years.